friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at yet another Takarian from Xinjiang uh, from this same study that the previous individual is from. There's gonna be a couple such videos. I will actually, I think I will make uh, videos like this until I find somebody who has blonde hair or blue eyes from this population and at that point I will stop. But until I find a person like that, I will continue making these videos. Uh, this Takarian individual from Xinjiang is male and his Y DNA is Q. Very interesting. It's a pretty, pretty common Y DNA for, uh, steppe people in general. It's very common for Turkic people as well. Uh, it does come from, uh, ancient North Eurasians and it, it is also present in Native Americans. So this Y DNA is something that actually connects Turkic people with, uh, indigenous people of, uh, the Americas. In terms of his mitochondrial lineage, his mitochondrial lineage, it looks like, is U5. That doesn't tell me much. I don't know much about uh, mitochondrial lineages, but U5 sounds like a European hunter-gatherer kind of lineage. So, um, yeah, that's all I can tell you about that. Uh, let's go ahead and look at his ethnic calculator results, and we're going to start with trait predictor. And with trait predictor, his ethnic calculator results are that he's closest to Yamnans from Kalmykia, Followed by Sarmatians from Urals, followed by, followed by Hispanics. Yes, I actually have a category for Hispanics. Uh, I jokingly named them Latinx here. Uh, followed by Volga Burtas individual from uh, from I think it's uh, Suzdal. So this is an individual who is Iranic, who um, in terms of his ethnicity looks very Iranic or Scythian or Sarmatian, but was from Suzdal in the medieval period, so I named him Burtas because Burtas was an Iranic group that lived in this region uh, in this time period. So I'm assuming this is this is a Burtas individual. So this individual is pretty close to various um you know Yamnans or people of the steppe, step people basically. Uh, aside from Hispanics, uh, everything here is a step uh, is step related. Alright now Let's go ahead and check what he scores with a GED match. We're going to go ahead and look at MDLP K11 Modern. So here we can see he's scoring this. It looks like uh, it's a pretty typical score for Yamne. The only difference between this and Yamne is that he's also scoring this, this amount of Siberian and this amount of Amerindian. And and yeah, that's kind of the, the only difference between this and Yamne. He's Scoring a lot of Caucasus, 37% uh, Caucasus. It is labeled as EHG, but it is not EHG. It is Caucasus Hunter. It is Caucasus specific drift. Uh, is it Caucasus Hunter Gatherer? Is it something else? No, it is. I don't know. It is Caucasus specific drift. It peaks in populations of the Caucasus. So he's scoring 37% of this Caucasus specific drift. He's got 34.7% uh, European Hunter Gatherer admixture. This is Western Hunter Gatherer plus Eastern Hunter Gatherer together. So he's. Um, you know, he's a split of European hunter-gatherer and Caucasus. There's a little bit of Iranian Mesolithic admixture here as well. But that's pretty typical for Yamne. The thing that is different from this and Yamne, the thing that differentiates this result from Yamne is the amount of Siberian and Amerindian he is scoring. And this really does um, sort of play into the history of, um, of these Takarian people. They are a mixture of Proto-Indo-Europeans such as Yamne or Afanasyevo. In their case, it's Afanasyevo plus um, a more East Eurasian group. So in this case, we see a mixture like this, where it's 70% uh, Yamne plus Akunyovo, or 71% Afanasyevo plus Akunyovo. Uh, in this oracle, there is no reference for West Siberian hunter-gatherers, or Tarim, uh, Tarim mummies, right? There is no um, reference for these people. But if there was, this individual would be scoring Afanasyevo plus Tarim, or Samara plus Tarim. In this case, Akunyovo is sort of being like a proxy for that. Akunyovo is acting as a proxy for the Tarim um, admixture. All right. Uh, what about Eurogene's K13? This is what he scores with Eurogene's K13. Very interesting result. Uh, kind of similar to Yamnen's as well. The difference, once again, between this and Yamne is the amount of Siberian and Amerindian that he is scoring. By the way, look at the 9.9% South Asian. This is also pretty much in line with what, with what Yamne would score. Uh, but I think Yamne in general would score around 6% from the videos I've done on them. Uh, I expect to see around 6% South Asian in Yamne in case. And there is also more West Asian in Yamne. So this individual is a little bit less West Asian. 
than the Yamlins, a little bit more South Asian, and also uh, also more, much more Siberian and, and Amerindian. Looking at the Oracle, he is closest to Tatars, Chuvash, and Erzia, various groups of uh, the Volga-Ural region, and he's actually getting more or less a mixture of Erzia plus Tajik, or Erzia plus Afghan, or Chuvash plus Kalash, so basically like a mixture of modern Northeast European plus uh, modern South Central Asian. Uh, although the distance here is pretty high, so it's not a particularly uh, precise model, not a particularly precise fit for him. Let's go ahead and look at his Nashakot results, what he looks like. So as you can see with the Nashakot results, his eye color is pretty, pretty dark. Uh, definitely very dark eye color. He's scoring 50% likelihood of brown eyes, 36% likelihood of darkest brown eyes. So his eye color is pretty much between brown and darkest brown. There is a slight chance of hazel eyes for him, but it's a small possibility. For hair color prediction, it looks like he's got black hair, definitely very dark color hair, 99% likelihood of black hair, uh, pretty much 0% likelihood of any other hair color. And uh, you can see on the graphic here, it displays sort of the gradient of hair that this individual might have had. Um, for skin color, it looks like he's got lightest brown or dark brown skin, so definitely very dark in terms of skin color as well. If you look at the gradient, the gradient is pretty, uh, pretty dark overall as well. For hair texture, it looks like he's got straight hair, okay? And for coloring-related variants, he does not have BEH2 or BEH3 or BEH1. So he's definitely very dark. No BEH1, no BEH2, no BEH3. Uh, very dark in terms of color. Uh, he does not have the route variants in SLC45A2. So also darker color of eyes, hair, and skin. And... He actually does have heterozygous genotype in this variation of ASIP, so uh, intermediate color of skin. In terms of uh, this this variation of ASIP does play a pretty big role in skin tone. Uh, in this calculation and in you know statistical data is suggesting that it does play a big role in skin tone as well. Him having a heterozygous genotype, genotype here means he's a little bit darker than the average Eurasian because the average Eurasian has uh, two light color variants in this variation. The average Sub-Saharan African has zero, so he's sort of between the average Eurasian and the average Sub-Saharan African in this regard. Um, okay, nothing is interesting here. He has two light color variants here, so this also contributes to scoring. Uh, this also contributes to scoring lighter color of skin. Uh, I'm not sure how how much of an impact this really does have in terms of uh, in terms of the impact on skin tone. But this variation of Keto G, which he does not have any gene types for, has a huge impact on skin tone. Uh, one of the biggest impacts out of all. Uh, he's not genotyped for this variation in SLC 24A5, so we don't know whether or not he has the two Eurasian, uh, the, the Eurasian light skin variants in this variation. Most likely he does. And most likely if this was present in the file, he would not be scoring uh, as dark of a skin tone as he is scoring. But nonetheless, and he does not have any ginger variants in MC1R, so he's not predisposed to being ginger. Now let's go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores and uh, monogenic traits. So for the polygenic risk scores, it looks like he is scoring a slightly below average score for schizophrenia, a below average score for type 2 diabetes, a slightly above average score for Alzheimer's, a slightly below average score for multiple sclerosis. Um, he's scoring... One risk variance for breast cancer out of 10, which is um, one risk variance for breast cancer. It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty good to see. Three out of 14 for testicular cancer. Once again, pretty good to see. One out of 10 for celiac disease. Pretty good to see. Uh, zero for GSS out of 10. Very, very good to see once again. Uh, z uh, two for Crohn's out of 20. Really good to see. Reifenstein's nothing was found here. So it's not a very high quality file, as you can tell. And for Parkinson's, 0 out of 4 for Parkinson's. Once again, not a very high quality file. But then again, there is nothing There is nothing concerning here. There is actually nothing that uh, that would that would be concerning in this whole result. Now let's move on to the monogenic traits. So we're going to go ahead and look at the results for mental health. It looks like he's got a G genotype in comets of Almat variation, meaning intermediate speedodopamine reuptake and intermediate dopamine levels. But he's got warrior genotype in MAOA, so overall he's probably more warrior than warrior. 
Uh, he's got slower breakdown of dopamine, therefore higher dopamine levels in the brain and certain advantages in attention and motivation tasks. Okay. That's actually a very uh, European... Uh, that's a that's a very European genotype to have. Stereotypically European. He also has another stereotypically European genotype, which is this variation. Uh, his genotype in this variation. He's got AA here, which means two derived no go learner variants of DRD2 Pro for Nancy Pro, uh, which means a significant reduction in the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia, and an increased likelihood of no go learning. The A allele here is most common in Europeans. And it's actually really uncommon everywhere else. Um, he does not have the A1 allele and TAC1, which is really good to see. So a typical genotype for most humans, which leads to a slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites uh, in the brain and slightly lower risk of ADHD and alcoholism. In comparison to the A1 allele, if he had one A1 allele or two A1 alleles, uh, he would have a significant decrease in the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and a significant increase in the odds of stuff like ADHD, alcoholism, Parkinson's. Um, it looks like he also does not have long form 5 HTTLPR, so he's got short form 5 HTTLPR and um, average odds of depression, slightly higher odds of depression. For autism, we're going to skip that. For DDC, we skip. For lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry any derived variants for European lactose persistence. If you took an ancestry test, they would say, hey, you are lactose intolerant. Uh, for OXTR and empathy gene, it looks like he's got this genotype, which is associated with an increased OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy. Uh, these two, I wouldn't, I don't really want to talk about them because I don't know how reliable they are. Um, there is this one, and there is another one that I typically place on top. But in this case, this individual doesn't have a genotype for it, so we're gonna go with his genotype here uh, because these are the variants I know that I've researched, and these are just kind of like from SNPedia that I don't really know much about. For diabetes, it looks like this individual does not have type 1 diabetes. All right. For hemochromatosis, it looks like he does not carry any risk variance for hemochromatosis. Really good to see. No Celtic curse. Um, for Alzheimer's, it looks like no risk variance in APOE. However, his heterozygous here, which actually leads to a slightly increased risk of Alzheimer's. Very interesting. For multiple sclerosis, no risk variance in HLA. Really good to see. Uh, we're going to skip cardiovascular for myopia. He's got two alleles that protect against myopia. Um, okay, for miscellaneous section, no micropenis. Really good to see. Um, mix, mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter than endurance athlete. No fat gene variants in FTOs, RS99, 609, so no predisposition to being overweight. No variants for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. And in EDAR, very interesting genotype. This, indiv this individual has, actually has heterozygous genotype in this variation of EDAR. This is the main variation in EDAR um, that typically people refer to. So he actually has heterozygous genotype here, which means either partial or full East Asian ancestry. And in case of him, we do know he has some East Asian ancestry. Not a lot, but he does have some. And it means most likely he has shovel-shaped ancestors and other East Asian facial traits, such as straighter hair and uh, skin, thicker skin. There's a difference in skin uh, texture as well. Uh, EDAR plays a role in a lot of things. For drug response, it looks like this individual... We're going to skip that. I don't care. Uh, for albinism, no albinism. Okay. For mini familiar Mediterranean fever, no risk variance for that. For MTHFR panel, it looks like he's got lower odds of various health issues. Very typical stuff. Uh, for cancers, six times reduced risk of testicular cancer. Okay. Definitely does not have testicular cancer. Really good to see. Reduced testicular cancer risk for men in this variation as well. So definitely really, uh, really protective genotype against various types of testicular cancer. For leukemia, it looks like there is one genotype which increases the risk of leukemia and one genotype which reduces it. So overall, I'd say it's pretty good. Uh, for rare diseases panel, it looks like no von Gerg's disease, no GSS, uh, and this genotype which leads to, it's a, it's a common genotype, but it leads to high risk for certain autoimmune diseases such as um, Addison's or type 1 diabetes. For celiac disease panel, it looks like there is Really no risk variants in HLA, which are by far the most important ones. There is one risk variant here, but I think it's pretty common. For allergies, with nothing here. Nothing was genotyped. For AR panel, nothing was genotyped. For Crohn's, uh, typical lower risk of Crohn's. Okay. For Canavan syndrome, it looks like nothing was genotyped for this either. For HIV, uh, there is only one genotype, and it's this one. No risk variants in this variation. Uh, I don't remember what gene it is, but 
Uh, it's really unfortunate that so much of the important stuff that I typically look for is just absent from this file. It's not a very high quality file, as you can see. For muscular dystrophy, uh, zero risk variance for the chin muscular dystrophy, zero risk variance here, and found zero out of zero for ADL. So unfortunately, yeah, it's it's just not a very good file. Um, I'm trying to uh, spawn content out of nowhere, but there isn't really much to talk about. So uh, it looks like there isn't just not much to talk about about this file. Aside from what I already did. So, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Um, you can download this file in 23 and me format from link which is in the description of the video. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content. Goodbye.